Chapter 2. Beyond Capital. Away from Marx with Marx. We have so far argued for a transformative approach to understanding capital as a value regime, that not only creates, circulates, and distributes value, often in a conflictual fashion, but fundamentally defines it as a normative quality to be placed primarily as the final cause of major human activities. See Endote 1. As we will discuss in this chapter, classical and Marxian value-based theories of capital have traditionally focused on the former aspect of capital's value regime, taking a critical analytical stance. However, in recent decades, intellectual and social struggles have shifted toward disputing what should be valued under or beyond the system, and calls for restructuring or replacing the value regime of capital have gained momentum. By returning to the centrality of value in our redefinition of capital today, we may be better equipped to address these pressing demands. The new left of the 1960s to 1970s, preoccupied with valuing identity, recognition, and culture, gradually gave way to the new, new left, of the 1990s to 2000s, now more concerned with global injustices and existential threats to life while maintaining concerns with post-material values. A new generation of progressive social and mass movements emerged that, unlike past generations, the so-called old and the new, tended to be more, accommodative, and transversal, though less coherently, with potentialities for integration of material or redistributive and post-material or recognitive concerns, see Hosseini, 2011, 2013, 2015. On the other hand, post or neo, Marxist, post or neo, anarchist, and post or neo, Keynesian accounts of structural crises, as an inherent property of capital, have recently enjoyed a moderate revival, see Albreton et al., 2004. The post-GFC renewed interest in capital and Marx, prompting a crucial inquiry, is there a valid reason to revisit the classical Marxian notion of capital and its linked value theory? See Endote 2. We propose that by reinvigorating our engagement with value theory and embracing a fresh conceptualization of value, we can develop a comprehensive framework that incorporates recent critical advancements in counter-system movements and revisionist scholarship. Most of this chapter offers a critical reflection on the Marxian value-based conception of capital, asking how such a notion, abandoned by mainstream economists, can help us comprehend the complexity of today's world. We will reflect on the strengths, potentialities, and limitations of the Marxian tradition and argue that its important potentialities can yet be used to transcend its limitations. We identify four limitations that will be discussed concerning, 1, the sphere of creativity beyond production relations, 2, the sphere of livability or vitality, 3, the sphere of convivial solidarity and care, and, 4, the sphere of post-capitalist modes of alterity. Although Marxist and post-Marxist thinkers have made important attempts to develop and reform the Marxian tradition to address the evolving complexities of capital, we propose that a consolidating effort, centered around the differentiation between true value and fetish value in their ultimate sources, is necessary to overcome these limitations. Our modular integrative framework will be presented in Chapter 4 after presenting its consolidating meta-theoretical basis in Chapter 3. This framework reveals how capital as fetish value emerges out of the decommonization of the fundamental causes of true value. The dual character of value in theory, the analytical, the normative. Although value theories of capital have been largely abandoned in today's social and economic studies, understanding what consists of value for and by society remains an unavoidable underpinning of critical theory. Certainly, the very avoidance of explicit discussions of value does not mean that value theory has become obsolete, see Greber, 2001, De Angelis, 2007, Mazzucato, 2018, Pitts, 2021, Hosseini, 2022. Every mode of social living is basically formed and constantly reformed around the ever-changing intersubjective construction and collective realization, distribution, and demolition, or negation, of value, in all its possible social ecological forms, and every social struggle is about controlling and or liberating such processes. To reconstruct the infamous maxim by Marx and Engels in the Communist Manifesto, the history of all hitherto existing societies, and by extension, the henceforth ones, is the history of two separate yet overlapping ideal types of struggles. One is between the value makers and value takers within the dominant value regime over the distribution of value, and the other, a more decisive one, over, what ought to constitute value, and the foundational structure of the value regime itself. While the former may facilitate important progress, 
it is the latter that plays a critical role in creating meaningful transformations, see Hosseini, 2022a, pages 2 to 3. It remains crucial, in the present day as much as it was during the 18th and 19th centuries, to position value theory at the core of transformative scholarship. By doing so, we can reconstruct it to comprehend the contemporary connection between capital and value, as well as the historical trajectory of capitalist and counter-capitalist relations and their potential evolution in the future. There have been two general approaches to critically theorizing value under capital. The first is a primarily analytical approach that presumes value to be an objective, material or immaterial, advantageous quality, extracted out of its resources, to sustain and amplify the ruling social order. Value, here, is constrained within the realm of political economy as a socio-economic phenomenon. This approach aims to demonstrate how the processes of production, circulation, distribution, and value loss, as perceived through the lens of the dominant system, can lead to both the reproduction and maintenance of the ruling order and the emergence of structural contradictions. These contradictions may, in turn, give rise to crises and lead to transformative metabolic shifts. Although primarily analytical and educational in nature, the approach initially presented by Marx in Capital holds indirect normative implications as it highlights the exploitation and alienation of the value makers, resulting from the process of value extraction by the value takers, see Smetona, 2015. In other words, it is substantially analytical but normative only by implication. For the critical theory to be transformative, as evident in Marx's general approach, it needs to be as normative analytical and ontologically integrative as it is praxeologically diversifying. It needs to be based on not only the dialectics between theoretical abstraction and concrete reality but also the dialectics between reality, as it happens, and truth, reality as it ought to be, morally acceptable and practically prefigurable. As we have argued elsewhere, to be radically transformative, the critical ought to be morally judgmental, refer to Hosseini and Gills, 2020b, page 18. If the point is to change the world, according to Marx and Engels, 1998, then the theorization of reality needs to engage with, rather than isolate itself from, the action guiding normativity embedded in the existing potentialities for, and experiences of, emancipatory practices in the past, present, and future. This imperative becomes even more essential if value is the subject of theorization or if it is central to the theorization of social change. What could be more normative than value? and what could be more paradoxical than a value-free notion of value. The second approach thus starts with a normative definition of value independent of the way value serves the interest of the ruling order to reveal the contrast between the status quo, where the potentialities are repressed, and the desired status where value is realized by the free associations of value makers in a socio-ecological context structured and actualized as commons. This perspective has more direct implications for praxis but requires us to establish a normative notional framework for defining value by drawing on human aspirations and struggles for a viable, good and free life, and its associated social formations. This is not a new endeavor. As a long-standing concern throughout history, numerous philosophers, ethicists, theosophists, and global theological movements, such as Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism, especially in their initial unruly forms among many less-known struggles, as well as indigenous cultures, have centered their worldviews and practices around valuing and embodying the essence of the good life. They define it according to their transcendental or more than material, more than human belief systems and ascribe value to the efforts that result in the realization of the good life. This good life can be understood as a social imaginary constructed based on the negation of the material conditions of life that constitute the sources of, more than, human suffering. Recent decades have seen an insurgence of interest in embracing this perspective at the cost of deserting the analytical approach previously emphasized. Within this context, one can find a diverse range of individuals and groups, including those who challenge consumerism, as well as those who advocate for a well-being economy and post-growth reform with notable figures like Sen, Nussbaum, Berry, Soper, and Eisenstein. In addition, more radical movements, including indigenous groups, liberation theologians, eco-feminists, post-developmentalists, and eco-anarchists, are also present in this terrain, encompassing both activists and intellectuals. Greber, 2013, page 238, for instance, argues for reverting to the original traditions that perceive human beings as projects of mutual creation, value as the way such projects become meaningful to the actors, 
and the worlds we inhabit as emerging from those projects rather than the other way around. However, the normative approach to value, while providing a framework for criticizing the status quo, has its own weaknesses. Such perspectives have largely failed to satisfactorily comprehend the concrete mechanisms through which capitalist relations extract and exploit value from nature, community, and labor. They have overlooked the complexities of power relations and class struggles inherent in sustaining and transforming the dominant value regime. See Endote 3. Such an approach can also be fairly criticized for being too idealistic and failing to engage with the practical difficulties of realizing an alternative system that prioritizes intrinsic value over capitalist exchange value. Although a normative theory of value can be advantageous for drawing attention to the unjust aspects of the capitalist system, it should be supplemented by a theory that enables rigorous analysis of the material and social conditions that underlie the social construction, production, and circulation of value within capitalism. It is crucial here to emphasize that normativity should not be solely rooted in institutionalized moral or value systems. Instead, it should also be based on ongoing critical examinations of historical and current struggles, as well as the possibilities for future emancipatory efforts. See Endnote 4. Such an investigation requires the involvement of liberation humanities, ethics and social sciences, which allow for the exploration and recognition of what subaltern communities of value makers perceive as value and fight for, see Greber, 2001. It also requires the intellectual engagement of nonconformist grassroots theorists who themselves engage in conversations with their societies on the value complexes they use to ascribe worth to their collective matters. The investigation of the imminent real and the aspiration to the transcendental ideal are two sides of one coin, and organic activist intellectuals are involved in constant dialogical exchanges between them. Theory undertaken solely for the purpose of explanation, regardless of its critical nature, has a tendency to regress into a self-defeating historical endeavor. The fundamental aim of liberation must shape the metatheoretical assumptions that underpin the theory and be seamlessly integrated into the theory itself, Hosseini and Gills, 2020. The task will always include answering a set of transformational questions, what alternative realities potentially, actually exist? How are the potentialities and struggles for their realization inhibited in the current social formation? And what socio-ecological mechanisms would actualize them to the level that they would transmute the conventional reality in its totality? These are not mere auxiliary questions, and therefore, our efforts to seek their answers need to be incorporated into our account of the dynamics of the prevailing reality. An integrative approach that combines both an analytical value theory and a normative one is essential. Such an integrative approach to theorizing the nature and dynamics of capital and its associated social forms, seen as the most prominent cause of ongoing global shifts and uncertainties, has significant implications for understanding current socio-ecological changes and challenges as well as effective responses. Developing a value theory that uses a normative, praxis-oriented alternative notion of value in its critical analyses of capital would be a bold move but also vital and legitimate. Such an approach, although starting with a normative or alternative notion of value is co-defined through involvement in lively social and dialogical praxis on the ground, must also engage in an analysis of the status quo and show how true value is replaced with or weakened by capitalist fetish value. It should also explore how re-establishing the sources of true value can become a base for liberation. Not only should value be seen as a normative category, but it should also be viewed as a relational construct, one that is constantly constructed and reconstructed through power relations, social struggles, and daily negotiations and compromises. Marx's value. Not an affirmative normativity. Although Marx's value theory in Capital provides a detailed analysis of the inner workings and historical development of capital, it is insufficient as a strong transformative theory. It primarily focuses on the evolving value forms of labor and capital under the capitalist mode of re-production by embracing a non-normative notion of value. This helps Marx follow his own epistemology by establishing his analysis based on conceptual categories derived from reality, an inverted Hegelian idealism, following the example set by Feuerbach. However, this historical realism is achieved at the cost of losing sight of the theory praxis nexus. Although Marx inverts Hegel-Ian idealism in Capital, his work nonetheless follows Hegel's logic in the real world of human labor, replacing the idea with value, see Kiev, 1983. Like the idea, value is objective but immaterial for Marx. It is, however, 
rooted in reality by being practically extracted out of abstract labor, as grasped in the Ricardian, labor theory of value, or LTV, adapted by Marx, and is in a dialectical movement from one abstract category to another through different moments of capital's self-reproduction, which in turn imposes its logic on labor and determines its forms. This can be interpreted as Marx's value theory of labor, according to Elson, 1979. However, Marx leaves no room for the incorporation of conceptual categories, especially a type of value, derived from the counter and beyond capital practices of revolutionary subjects, laborers, or otherwise. Marx reinvented value theory by adopting it from his predecessors, but he retained the perception of value from capital's point of view. Neither the word value nor the word productive has any positive moral or material meaning in Marx's version of value theory. Value is what is valued for capital and not for or by society in the life domain. Furthermore, the positive, linguistic, connotation associated with the term, value, in general, and its association with, labor, as its ultimate source in classical political economy and Marxist thought in particular, has resulted in an enduring ambiguity within the Marxian tradition, an ambiguity that persists to this day, surprisingly even among many of its revisionists and critics. Foster and Burkett refer to this ambiguity as the systemic conflation of two distinct meanings of value, value as intrinsic worth and value as commodity, value. Those disputing what should be included in the perception of the sources of value tend to ignore the fact that from a non-capitalist point of view, value under capital, our commodity value as theorized in Marx's capital, is nothing but a deficit, given that it results in the annihilation of inclusive good life. Therefore, it is vital to differentiate between true value, as defined from a communist point of view as a partly experienced, partly imagined, quality of life through non-submissive social relations like in oikos. On the one hand, versus the so-called capitalist value, considering the differences between the two, what our theory of value should concentrate on as its primary subject is the role of capitalist value in the destruction of true value. That is, a process of a growing deficit in aggregate true value under capital that we conceptualize under the title of fetish value. In short, we define surplus capitalist value as the difference between the aggregate economic value extracted, directly and indirectly, out of the sources of value and the value embedded in the capital which is expended in the reproduction of those sources to sustain the reproduction of capital, see chapter 4 for a more detailed definition. The notion of surplus value, however, inclusive of all sources of value, limits our attention to the lost capacity of these sources to reproduce themselves. Nevertheless, a more important matter disregarded in such a formulation is their lost capacity to re-produce true value, which is essential to the thriving and survival of organized life in the commonest condition of living. The notion of fetish value takes this neglected reality into account. 